so let's get right into the cuff um, I am about to do my last row of slip stitches each size has a different amount of slip stitch ridges these little bumps is what I refer to as slip stitch ridges so for my size I've got 17 for your size just refer back to your pattern I just quickly want to show you how I keep my slip stitches nice and loose so there's my chain one and turn now this is the wrong side of the fabric facing you this is flat the right side has the ridges easy way to know so <clears throat> skipping that first that chain you made we will slip stitch into the back loop of that first half double crochet I just want to show you right there now yarn over and pull through can you see I'm holding my working loop this is to not tighten it there's my first slip stitch now my second one I'm again holding the working loop yarn through there's my second slip stitch so really just keep your slip stitches in the back loops only keep them nice and loose even if it slows you down a little bit it will definitely help when you have to work into those back loops again otherwise it can be a little bit frustrating so i've done 28 of my 30 slip stitches i just want to show you right there that last half of double crochet leans quite a bit to the back so i'm going to do there is the second last slip stitch and then my last one turn your work towards you slightly and that little knot those two bars that's the front loop and there's the back loop so just go into that back loop and do your final slip stitch so chain one and turn So doing the seam, I want you to fold your starting chain up and over towards your last row. You've already chained one and turned. Now to do the seam so it is more or less invisible, we will use those two little or two little loops formed by the starting chain and we'll go in that little hole right at the bottom of it there it is so that's our first one insert your hook and on the second side on the slip stitch row that first little stitch is actually your chain one which is not counted so there is your slip stitch going into the back loop still just as you did for the rest of the cuff and slip stitch those two together that's our first slip stitch done now looking for that second little hole you can see where you went in next one is right there below both strands of that starting chain and there's your second slip stitch back loop on over and do your second slip stitch. A second last stitch. There it is. Back loop. Slip stitch and then that last little stitch will have the knot of your starting chain. And usually that last slip stitch is leaning a little bit towards the back. There we go, seam, seam all done. Now chain one and just put that on the stitch marker. Now we want to turn our cuff right side out. This is the wrong side of the fabric facing us. Just turn it right side out. We are going to start working around the top edge. This is written under sleeve setup 
so this row is not counted as a row as part of the sleeve it's part of the cuff we are going to make one single crochet in our slip stitch ridges here's our slip stitch ridge and then two in each half double crochet row in the side of that row just to <clears throat> show you our seam is right there it's fairly visible So let's set up the sleeve. So for every two rows you'll have three stitches. I like to split my slip stitch ridge. There's that little V. Go right in the middle of those because if you do your single crochet it will duplicate that little V. There's my first single crochet. So placing your marker in that first stitch we will make two single crochets in the half double crochet re the row. Now you can go into either of those holes. I prefer going into the body of the half double crochet. It just neatens this edge. So I go under both strands of yarn that forms the body of your half double crochet. There's one single crochet and two. So the pattern states place one single crochet in the slip stitch ridge and two in each half double crochet. Do this all the way around and I'll meet you to do the invisible join. I'm ready to do my invisible join. I like to use this join in quite a few of my designs and we are using it for two rounds on the sleeve. So there's my last single crochet. My first one that I marked is leaning towards the back. See where the marker has been? This is one of the reasons why I really like to put that marker there. Because you want to pull up both those loops to get these at the same height. Not 100% but this stitch will be higher than the first one so hold on to your working yarn this is the trick and then just pull up this working loop slightly take it off your hook now really pulling up both those loops if you didn't put in a stitch marker just use your hook to really pull up those loops back and front loop of that first single crochet. Now inserting your hook from the back to the front I prefer hooking it and just make sure it's nicely pulled up. The key is to have your hook on top of your working yarn. Now place your loop back on your hook, pull it tight and pull it through to the back. Because we are changing color to our body color or main color, you now drop this yarn and chain one with your new color. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a fa fairly long tail because I want to use this as a running stitch mark. There's my little loop on the hook. new yarn I simply drop it over my hook with the tail into the front and chain one now you want to pull that contrast color tight This is also where, where we will switch to our larger hook that we swatched with. In my case, 5.5 millimeter. This will be for the remainder of our sleeve as well as the body. So there's our chain one. Just pull it a little bit tighter. 
and in that same single crochet as we did the join so where that little red loop in my case comes out we are going to single crochet simply insert your hook yarn over up a loop now I always just pull the two loops the same height it's just because it was that joining stitch yarn over and pull through both there's my first single crochet so for round one of the sleeve <clears throat> we are simply single single crocheting around with our larger hook which will give us a little bit of extra space I like to now single crochet over this end again you don't have to but the more ends I can go over while working better for me so there's one single crochet 